So some of your units are going to have a bedside monitor as opposed to the Dynamap that you bring into each room individually. The bedside monitor, you're able to do the exact same set of vitals as you would with the Dynamap. When you look at the bedside monitor, there's a few things that you might notice when you're walking into the room. There are some um, things displayed for you. Sometimes they're not always on, and if that's the case, sometimes the monitor's in what we call a monitor standby. So if you were to walk into the room like this, just wake it up, you just kind of tap the screen and it comes back to life. There is an on-off button, so if you were getting a new admission and you needed to turn the monitor on for the first time, there's an on-off button right here that you would do so. But right now, our monitor's on. It's displaying a lot of information for us. Some things that it's displaying is that the patient's on telemetry and the heart rate there is saying is 60. Well, we'll talk about telemetry in just a second, but this is what your five lead telemetry system would look like that would be hooked up to your patient. We also have displaying there is the SVO2. The SVO2 here, you would get out of your supply room if it's not there, but this just goes right on your patient. Sometimes it's continuous, like Linda had mentioned. Other times it's intermittent. You would just hook it on your patient as needed when you're getting a set of vitals. Your respirations is also displayed there, and you also have the last blood pressure displayed there as well. The blood pressure cuff is located right here as well. Get it out of your supply room if it's not already in your room. And to get at blood pressure, you're going to hit the start stop button. You hit start, okay, and it hits your blood pressure. You take the cuff off when you're done, and then it records your result right there. One thing I do wanna mention about your respirations and heart rate, okay? Now we can use our blood pressure machine or cuff to get our blood pressure. We can use the SVO2 to get the SVO2, but for your respirations, it's displaying it for you, but our machines aren't always as accurate as we could be if we got a manual respiration rate. So just like Linda had showed you, you can get a respiration rate and see if it matches up because sometimes our bedside monitors pick up patient movement. Um, so they're not always as accurate. Heart rate is also showing for us, but again, it's best to get a pulse. So you can get a radial pulse to double check and make sure that is the same. The only other thing that's not on here is your thermometer, okay, for your temperature. So thermometers are lots of times located behind the head of the bed, but sometimes you just need to bring in a portable one, get your temperature, and it will display up there for you or right on your portable thermometer. So some normals for you, heart rate should be between 60 and 100, right? Your respiration should be between 12 and 20. Your SpO2 should be anywhere between 92% and 100%. Blood pressure should be somewhere around 120 over 80, and temperature should be somewhere around 98.6 Fahrenheit or 37 for Celsius. So those should all be on your reportable conditions page there. And last thing I said, if we are hooked up to telemetry, if your patient has all of the five lead telemetry system hooked up, this is what we call a main wire. It's hooked right into the bedside monitor. So this patient probably isn't getting out of bed um, or or getting too far from the bedside monitor. If they do get out of bed, they get in the hall, they're you know up to the chair maybe, um, we would need a portable monitor. And at that point, the nurse would be the one to switch that out. You guys will not be disconnecting this for any reason to get your patient up and out of bed. They should have a portable one on if they are getting up and moving. So again, you can refer to your reportable conditions page and we'll be talking about more of that content in the live classes.